made it. I made it. Huzzah! Here I am. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BBC's Views Live. I've been running around like a blue arsed fly. Uh, it's the 23rd of March. I hope you can hear me. Christ on a bike. I've been all over the shop today. Um, anyway, welcome to the BBC's Views Live. Here I am. Um, okay, just in time. Uh, a bootneck is never late. He, exact, he arrives exactly when he means to. Uh, now then, crikey's loads of you in already. Habitual turn and twister, make it quick the footies on. Okay, sorry, I'll, I'll be as fast as I can. A punkman now then, Professor Andy, K10, thanks for modding and sad wings, hello. Uh, Kirky Bally, Jeff Wedden, Graham Duffy, Karen Megson, now then, uh, Catherine, uh, A, Zach Todd, and anybody else who I'm going to miss because, uh, frankly, there's far too many of you. The bootneck's getting, the bootneck's getting uh, popular now, isn't he? So you can't all get a name drop. Uh, tactical timing, yes, let's call it that. Um, I was trying to hang my flag properly, uh, but then I realised there's no, um, there's only hooks on one side, obviously, because it's a flag. So when I try to stick it on these like big ass poles I bought for a green screen, uh, it didn't work. So sorry, I will, uh, I'll get this fixed. I've literally just moved everything in. Uh, I've got a desk load of shit there as well. Um, and I need to empty all the drawers. You know what it's like when you move, you just throw everything in boxes, don't you? Um, the good thing is we gone, went from a flat to an house, so I've now got absolutely shitloads of um, space, which is much handier. And it is the regimental flag, yes, it's the it's Royal Marines colours, that, but it's uh, embarrassingly draped over a hat stand. Well, it's not a stand, it's a stand for a, um, for a green screen, which I was thinking of trying to add some technology into this thing, but obviously I'm a bootneck, technology isn't my um, strong point. Right then, there's loads of stuff to talk about this week. What I've started doing so I can keep track of all the ridiculous stories. Uh, first Norwich investigates Sproust and bus driver sex act image. <laughs> What's he doing getting a nosh for the fair? I thought that only happened in Middlesbrough. Um, yeah, that's how I used to get to school. <laughs> Gobble the bus driver. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of them things. There's been loads of mad shit. This week, loads of it. And what I do is I retreat or reply to stuff on Twitter that makes me laugh. And then I think, happy days, I've got this for, yeah, this is my way of taking notes in a lazy way. Because I work full time, this is just a hobby. Um, my lazy way of taking notes is reply to or retweet amusing stories on Twitter and then talk about them on Saturdays. So, um, yeah. Here's some of the Look at this one. Look at this. Lord, if he bought this, I'm assuming it's a bootneck because that's his profile picture. <laughs> there's, there's tons of bootnecks uh, online now who use typical bootnecks, prof and everything. There's loads of bootnecks who use my cartoons for um, for the profile pictures now. <clears throat> if they do, I send them the original, if I can be asked, because I see them all the time now. I uh, I shoot them a PM with, with a 1080p version of the... Uh, the imaging, so I think I sent that to Wiffy Boat Race. Um, but the story shared was fucking mental. Um, yeah, that's yeah, look at this. Look at this. This is how I'll tell you what if your fat dad is hanging out of an upstairs bedroom, right? If your fat 70 year old dad is hanging out of an upstairs bedroom window and the living room and the kitchen are on fire, and this useless twat turns up. You best hope he can fuck it. You best hope he's flame proof, fire retardant. Because uh, if I can zoom in a bit and get this to work, because that's a bit, you can't really read it, can you? It's, it's not too big on Twitter. It's sort of hard to get the. Uh... There we go. See if you can read this. Can you, can you see that at all? Probably just about it. Eh? Um, Daniel Coleman, station manager, direct entry program. So she's not a firefighter. Never put a fucking, she hasn't put a fag out. And she's the station manager, direct entry program. I'll just read you this fucking gobbledygook. For those of you that I haven't met yet, I joined Staffordshire Fire and Rescue Service at the end of September 2023 on the direct entry station manager scheme. Typical of who's in, running the world now, isn't it? Managerial midwits. Prior to this, I spent 20 years in the private sector, primarily in recruitment. When I saw the advert for the role, I thought that it was just what I was looking for. 
And 10 weeks later, I'm very confident I was right. Getting paid a small fortune, no doubt. The questions that I've been asked most since joining have been the above. Um, nine stations visited, eight days of GRTs, one day spent at Fire Service College <laughs> at a six-week course, confirmed to start in January, where you'll learn something about fire. She'd be the one throwing paraffin on the fucking fire, wouldn't she? Two operational performance meetings attended. Five other direct entry station managers met. One fitness plan ongoing. Lots of delicious lunches eaten. I hate the word delicious. <clears throat> one ops forum meeting attended. One quiz won. Fucking. One formal qualification achieved. 21 pro modules completed. 14 meetings. One high sheriff. Blah, blah, blah. Two well-deserved cake finds. It's fucking just more of you the same shite that you'd expect from the world we're living in now. Like, where the person in charge has got no fucking operational experience at all, no knowledge, but an overeducated, an overeducated middle-class arsehole, and the people that run the world now love that type of shit. And you have to take orders from your lessers. That's how it works now. When I was in the fucking Royal Marines, at least you knew the officers were capable. The bootneck officers have to do the 30 miler an hour faster than the men. Just as like a little thing, like, so you know that the the guys in command, if they haven't, they haven't just walked into it, they've at least done something. This dumb, fat, honking bit of kit is going to be lauded over all the lads now. Can't even swing an axe. Can't swing an axe. Can't fucking run a bath. Uh, absolutely useless. And there, this is the world we live in now. Managerial twat. It's even annoying me at work now. It wasn't like this in the like. Um, as you know, I've mentioned it many times. I work in the aerospace industry. It wasn't like that even ten years ago. But now it's getting that way. It's getting that way where you just get some fucking. I don't know, split ass with the degree in Latin who turns up and tells you fucking what's what. It's like, doesn't matter how long. You know what else annoys me about it? It's the hypocrisy of them constantly going on about everything's about like lived experience. Have you noticed that? When they're doing it, when they're doing it, ooh, it's all about lived experience. Lived experience, yeah. But when some fucking dumb, fat, square-headed fucking chair warrior wants to run the entire fire service for a region, then lived experience doesn't matter. doesn't matter if Lord Iffy Boat Race has been to 700 fires and rescued fucking 800 cats <laughs> and fucking saved 200 CPR on 200 people. Some square-headed fucking Eddie Munster-looking con turns up and says, oh, yes, but I've done a course. So I'm in charge. What about your lived experience then? Weird that, isn't it? Weird. It's almost like absolutely everything these useless twats do is just fucking blatant. Blatant in your face, as subtle as a punch in the fucking bollocks. Um, hypocrisy. Everything they do is hypocrisy. When it suits them, lived experience. When it also suits them, fuck your lived experience. So they, they don't want a firefighter who's put out a few hundred fires and served on the force for 20 years. They want some fucking recruitment bird who's never been anywhere near a fire. She'd be the type of one who'd think, you'd be like, oh, yeah, there's a towering conflagration. Quick, get in there. Shall I wear a shell suit? You know, that's, a, that's how much she knows about fucking putting fires out. Grenfell's on fire again. Quick, you, get in there. Shall I wear a garish purple shell suit I bought, I bought off the fucking market? You know the ones I'm talking about. Them dodgy shell suits where you fl someone flicks a bogey at you and you burst into flames. <laughs> That's what she'd wear if she was responding to a 999 call. Yeah, and that's that as well. And in the military, as in the fire service, and the police, everything else, paramilitary, as you all know, you get dead, you, you get dead man's shoes, don't you? If you want to get promoted, someone has to die. Uh, Paul is in. I, uh, I'm sure you're all watching Paula by now, but say hello to Paula. She's a good egg. She's a very based middle-aged woman. Um, 
well, I'm a middle-aged man now. I don't mean to sound disparaging. That we're all old bastards. It seems like if you've got any common sense when it comes to the politics of the crazy world we're living in, you're basically all over the age of 40, aren't we? You very rarely meet a 23-year-old who hasn't got an head full of cow shit these days because they took over the entire education system. Um, <clears throat> the ladybird guy to put fires out. Fizzy piss. This isn't booze, this. This is a uh, fizzy water, look. Fizzy water. Fizzy. It's a bit posh, but it's free at work, so I took the can when I was leaving. Um, yeah, no booze. It's only it's just gone 12 o'clock here, and I've got a lot of admin to do because I've just moved out. So anyway, that's my rant of the day. Yeah, not only is she really a firewoman, Paula, she is the top banana firewoman. She stepped over 50 blokes who've been firemen for 20 years to take over the fucking whole thing, and it looks like she couldn't run a bath. And according to her own thing there, she can't do... She's unfit. She's fat and unfit. She's never been anywhere near a fire, and she's got the IQ of a pull a long duck. So, yeah, what a load of shit. Park it. Sick. Yeah, me too. Me too. Everything about them I hate now. I hate, I hate their open warfare on working-class scum like me. I hate it. Like, they they just hate us, don't they? They hate everything about us. They hate the way we talk. They hate our uncouth behaviour. They hate the way we swear. Oh, my God, the language on him. That's why when Donald Trump says something like, hey, these are shit all, they all go, fucking hell. Oh, no, they don't say that. They go, oh, my word. Oh, my stars. He said shithole. Everybody says shithole. It is, this is what I'm saying, it's these globalist psychopaths that are like fucking 8% of the world running everything. What percentage of working class people in Western Europe get offended by the word shit old? Like, they hate us. They hate everything about us. And I was thinking, like, I've got a broad selection of friends. Like, obviously, I'm a chatty bloke. I've got a lot of mates. I'm in, like, three or four WhatsApp groups with... Two of them were all my mates from long before I got uh, a channel. And probably about 25 lads that I keep in touch with regularly from back on. And not a single one of them is woke. Like, none of them have anything in common with the people that run the world, which is like the Irish referendum what proved it. Like, some of them are Labour voters. Like, my mate Muzzy, bit of a dickhead, wishes he wants to be, want to be socialist because he has been since he was 12. And he's born and raised in the northeast of England. But he's nowhere near woke. Like he's one of my good mates. And he hates all, he's not politically correct. Um, he does hate the Israelis, <laughs> obviously, because they all do. Uh, but he talks normal and he swears all the time and he's not politically incorrect. And he likes going to the footy and drinking pints and being normal. Like the old left and the old right, everybody this woke thing is a gigantic global phenomena whereby they all hate normal people like that's what i'm saying they're all weirdos the old left and the old right and the old center all of them basically if you're a normal working class person they hate you these like like the likes of jess phillips or owen jones if they met my mate muzzy who's been a fucking socialist his whole life or he thought he was a socialist but he's not really he's one of them taught to vote labor by his mum and dad but doesn't really know that much about politics they'd hate him they'd hate him to see him drinking three bottles of wine on a fucking Saturday night and talking shit with all of his right wing friends, and they despise him. They'd be like, "Oh my, oh my God, they're so uncouth and they've got rough hands." Ugh. It's so weird. It's like overt hatred for like most people. And the Irish referendum. I mean, we can talk a bit about that because I showed you a lot of the video I made about the uh, the whole the, the state fucking things in Ireland, like. I think, more, I think more than any other country, it's the most obvious with Ireland. And Ireland, because they're Irish, right? I mean, Freud said you couldn't psychoanalyse the Irish. We've, we've all got a bit of Irish in us, haven't we? So uh, I can smell me own. The, the north of England's the same, the northeast. As I keep saying, I, I'm not a, a real man faces the mirror, and I've said this many times before. I'm full aware, unlike the Scottish and Welsh, an Irish fucking delusional twats. I'm well aware that if it wasn't for the sort of the old school John Locke fundamental Disraeli sort of 
Adam Smith, David Hume, like the old school conservatives are like educated people. If it was down to like us, I know we'd have fucked it all up. The Scottish, the Welsh and the Irish are in cloud cuckoo land. The North East, they're my people. If new, if Geordies ran the whole of the UK, the UK would have never done anything because we're all about passion and fire. That's what the Scots are like, and that passion. Passionate, you're a fucking idiot. I hate getting off the plane at Newcastle Airport and it says the North East, passionate people, passionate places. What it means is this lot are thick as fuck. So <laughs> That's what they mean by passionate, right? And they've got all the passion up north, but they're not thinkers. The people that built the country are southern and they did build everything. And I'm man enough to admit it. And the Irish are labouring under the delusion that the people that make the movers and shakers that make the world go around are on their side. And I think even more than in the northeast, the globalist types really, really, really have scorn for the Irish. Like, you know what? I've noticed it. What was the dead popular film that came out about a year or two ago? You know, I watch them all because my missus being an American, she loves all that shite. She's a, she's a Hiberna fan, I think. Um, with Colin Farrell in. And it was another, basically, Mark, Mark is it Mark McGuinness? No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm thinking of Martin McGuinness, the pirate fucker. <laughs> Martin McDonoghue in it, right? The guy who did, like, um, In Bruges and all that. Um, let me see. I'll find a point. Anyway, because I, I want to make the point right. So it's Martin McDonough. Uh, and the film he made that was really popular a couple of years ago was The Banshees of Insurance, right? So I watched that. And it's the same old shite where the the walk lefty globalist twats really do think nothing good about the past of Ireland. Like when they make a film about Ireland, they're all fucking idiots. Yeah, same with cavalry as well. They're all morons. Like the 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 living little they're like dumb hicks who live in the sticks and they're all quirky and wacky and thick as fuck and totally irrational. And they make these films that are clearly taking the piss out of Irish culture and heritage all the time. And the same with us, because they want to destroy your past. Like, it's, as people have been paying attention, know this, like, you have to kill the past. They always say in all the entertainment, every, I'm sick of watching fucking films now where they go, oh, yeah, you have to kill the past, kill the past. Star Wars, kill the past, forget the past. Indiana Jones, forget the past. I want you to forget the past because only if it can make you forget everything you thought you knew can they make you you're an open book then and then they fill your head with shit and and it's like a a, a worldwide phenomenon it's everywhere if they've done it in America with the 1619 project trying to convince everybody that everything they thought they knew is gone that's why they do it George Washington he was an asshole let's make 1619 the founding of America. Benjamin Franklin, cunt. You know, all the people you thought, you're like, Winston Churchill, racist. It, see what I'm saying? It's in every single country. Charles de Gaulle, he was a twat. Because that's it. And they tell you in the mainstream media and they tell you in the TV shows and they tell you in the movies, kill the past, forget the past. So the Irish is a dead good example. Everything they make about the Irish, thick as fuck. They're ashamed of it. And the ruling elite showed it with this last... Um, Referendum they just had, because they're constantly pushing it on them. Like, look how bad the past is. The pa oh, we were so bigoted and insular. Oh, yes, and the women were just baby factories, yes. And they were all uncouth and they all drank stout. No, no, they didn't sit on a cashmere blanket outside m and eating fucking smoking gitans and a wheel of French cheese, talking about fucking Guy Verhofstadt and their holidays in the fucking Cotswolds. It's bollocks. It's because they want to totally rubbish everything about the past. And then if you're willing to throw it all in the trash, 
then you're an open book and they can fill your head with absolute shite. So it'll be like, oh, you, you know, your granddad told you that a ma you should marry a woman and settle down and have a few kids. No, 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 here's what you should do. How have you thought about sucking a man's cock uh, out the back of a kebab shop and just, you know, every single weekend just getting fucking scissored by, uh, smashed by loads of sailors and just taking loads of drugs and, you know, being in a polycule. What about trying that? You know, because when when you're a kid in the 80s, they were like, yeah, work hard, uh, get married, have some kids. Uh, yeah, cheers, do what I did and my dad did and their dad did and their dad did. They don't want you to do any of that. They go, what you should do is fuck your granddad. Because look, Irish people, we've showed you this film. There's nothing to be proud of your past. Your, your grandparents were all thick as fuck. You, you, they were all racist and bigoted. They're all, they all controlled women's wombs, all these fucking buzzwords. Uh, so what you should do is you should forget absolutely everything your grandparents taught you on the knee. Uh, and you should just watch Jeffrey Marsh on TikTok and Dylan Mulvaney videos on YouTube. And then you should suck your fucking dad's balls because that's definitely not perverted and sick. What you should do is snort lines of fucking beak off of Ben Copper's cock and you'll be happy. You'll be happy. <laughs> Trust me. This is the way to happiness. And I keep telling you, how many stories have I covered on the BBC where it's like, here's why you should have a threesome or body positivity. Think about it. Like, I could literally talk about this subject for hours and hours. Like, everything they do is to make you ill. Think about it. Everything now. Everything. It's to make you ill. Oh, here's 20 reasons why being a fat fuck is good for you. Here's the new Victoria's Secret model. She's got more chins than the fucking Chinese phone book. Oh, yeah, this is a good idea. Lizzo's the new pop star. Back in the day, Shirley Bassey was, like, super fit, wasn't she? She was well tidy. Now it's like, fuck it, worship Lizzo and um, what's his name? Sam Smith. Yeah, I mean, have you seen that shit? What you should do if you want to be happy, let a bloke piss in your face. <laughs> You'll be well happy. Have you tried it? Oh, how do you know you don't like it? How do you know you don't like it? Forget everything your granddad told you. Let a man piss in your face. You'll fucking, you'll love it. You'll love it. <sighs> will I? Will I though? Uh, and as I said, that, that's why they do what they do. They, they, they want to convince you that everything you thought was wrong in the past, everything you were taught, everything you learned on your parents' knees and your grandparents' knees, it all has to be forgotten so we can fill your head with insane backwards woke globalist lunacy and what the irish proved was because i mean think of this right it wasn't even close so i mean let me put at least put a story while i'm ranting what was i going to talk about this week there's fucking loads of stuff um it wasn't even close the irish referendum um christ i'm sick of doing this about the flag as well fucking sailor it, there, it wasn't even close the irish referendum and it wasn't close because Think of this, even though all these Irish women were getting told, conditioned, constantly battered around the head with it, saying, oh, yeah, 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 you're, um, you're all fucking, you're all victims, you're all living under the patriarchy, they just want you to be baby factories. The Irish said no, even though most of them are happy to accept that, like, there was negative things about the past. but because they have a rational worldview. Like, Irish women don't feel like in 2024 they're going to get battered by their husbands, they're not allowed a divorce, they've got no freedoms, they can't do anything. They don't feel trapped. So no matter how much they tell them, even socially liberal modern Irish women who aren't Catholics and aren't conservative voted no because it's normal to have... Re reverence for your past and your forebears. Like, think of that. There's going to be in there, there's going to have been like modern, agnostic, socially liberal Irish women who voted no because they were just like, I don't feel like I'm living in a patriarchy. I'm pretty happy. And I love my granddad. And I love my dad. And I sat on his knee and he told me stories. And yeah, I don't agree with him on everything. But he was my granddad, and I care about and I cared about him. It's it's this weird obsession they have with destroying your past and trying to make you hate yourself and hate your family. And unlike them, 
normal people aren't conditioned to utterly despise anyone that sees the world slightly differently from them. So the, the reason that failed is because of that. Like the, the, no, it's not like it's not like most of Ireland are trapped in the 1930s. Women shouldn't be allowed to vote. We should all just drink whiskey and kick fuck out of everyone all the time. It, it's not that at all. It's just that they're not deranged and they don't think that you have to fucking sign up for everything 100% and you have to hate your grandparents and hate your past and think nothing was good about Ireland when it was predominantly Irish and there wasn't any fucking blokes playing pan pipes and teaching you how to breathe and eating fucking mushy peas and pretending it's guacamole. Uh, it's just like, it's really weird the way that they've got this like fucking obsession with brainwashing everybody. Like there's just no dissent allowed. Oh yeah, so the flag thing, I'll briefly talk about it. But to be honest, I find the whole story a bit boring. And the reason I replied to so many of these was because it was just like, it was gaslighting on a massive scale, wasn't it? Like, did anybody else get sick and tired of seeing these fucking flags? Like, everywhere you looked, there's one. Oh, look, what's wrong with this? Look, someone changed the flag. I don't think you should be allowed to do this. Every one of them. And this, uh, Scotland didn't go mad when you changed the flag. Uh, like, Everywhere, oh, flag would not change the flag. Fucking hell, Scotland didn't care. Oh, how dare they change the flag? Dare they dare. On and on and on and on. Every fucking post lock. Oh, look, Brazil changed the flag. Oh my god, was the end of the day. Oh, look, there's the oh, look, the flock snowflakes crying about the flag. It's it fucking makes my brain hurt. Nobody's complaining about them fucking changing colors on the flag. It's not that. Nobody cared about the Olympic one or the copper one or the Hovis bag or anything else. And we all know it, which is the mad thing. Like every single person in this chat knows that the problem isn't slightly changing the colours. The problem is putting overt, aggressive political messaging on the flag. I, I said to one of these silly cunts, like when he's like, oh, yeah, Scotland didn't care when we changed the Scottish flag, like, uh, you know, that one. The salt air became like that colour. I was like, yeah, yeah. You'd care if we made the background the Union Jack and instead of the salt air, the St. David's, uh, St. Andrew Cross, you had two crossed fucking dildos. You'd care then. The Pakistan flag with a massive fucking dildo across it. They'd care then, wouldn't they? If the flag of Saudi Arabia had a fucking rent boy grabbing his ankles <laughs> on it instead, they'd care then. It's so stupid and disingenuous when they were like, oh, look, nobody cared when they changed the colours. Nobody does care when you change the colours. And you know. They all know it. It's fucking ridiculous. Look, oh, we didn't lose our shit over the pale blue. So, yeah, well, there's loads of times they change the colours. If they, They've inverted it on the England away strip loads of times, so it's a red fucking background and a white cross. Nobody gives a shit about the colours. But the colours they picked... War was a political message. That's the difference. As I said, that's my idea. Just do the fucking Pakistan flag, but then I love cock across it. See if see if they'd say anything. I'm, I'm just putting out there. A Palestine flag with Elton John on the fucking front, like that, with a cock in each hand on the Palestine flag. Let's just put that up on put that up on the Golden Bell End Church. See if I'm sure the Imams won't say anything. It's fucking ridiculous. Like I, I can't believe like how many people posted the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Like fuck they all just endless. Oh uh, look, eh, grow up for fuck's sake, grow up for fuck's sake. Go on then, Nish. Nish, where are you from? Whatever country Nish is from, I'm assuming it's a country where they're not really keen on um blokes gobbling each other off. Pick that country's flag and just put a massive cock and balls on it. Just see, you know what I mean? Surely it's not a problem, is it? <laughs> oh, here we go. Good news. Pakistan and Afghans close to all our war. Well, is there anyone left to fight? Surely Pakistan and Afghanistan now is just two fucking deserts because they're all in bastard leads, aren't they? <laughs> That's... 
Reminds me of one of them corny jokes my dad told me when I was about eight. He was like, oh, what would happen if they dropped a nuclear bomb on Pakistan? Now, it's because they're all fucking over here. That, that's going to be the, the Pakistan and Afghan all out war resulting in about six casualties. Because <laughs> they're all living in fucking Bradford. So that's not going to cause any issues, is it? Easy. Easy. It'd be the least bloody war in human history. Oh, yeah, the Afghans are tilled up now. I'm loving it. Well, bomb each other back to the door. Bomb each other out of the fucking Stone Age. That's what they're going to have to do. So, um, yeah, that was the flag thing was fucking ridiculous. What else have I got to talk about? Oh, yeah, and look, and there was a virtue signaling sailor look. Look at this. I wore these in Afghanistan. No outrage over it. Grow up, fifths. David fucking soy boy McKenna. Look at him. Typical fucking Matlow. Thinks he's fucking Billy Big Bollocks because he did, what, one tour in Afghanistan. He was so far in the rear, he had to send his fucking laundry forwards. What a wanker. And he knows that that's not the problem. He knows that's not the problem because nine out of ten soldiers out there going, oh, yeah, I wore these in Afghanistan. No outrage. It's not the colours, you silly bastard. But he already knows it before he posts it. So that's the point I'm making. They're all being disingenuous. It's like gaslighting on a fucking global scale. Anyway, what else? <clears throat> what else have I got from this week? Because like I said, there's been fucking loads. It's been a mad week. Post, here we are. Let's have a look at what I've posted. Normally save shit. We're in the shit there. The firewoman we've talked about. Christ almighty. Wouldn't trust her to put a fucking flag out. Flag shit. <laughs> Joy Barton said. New law for Lukaku. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. A new law for Lukaku. Listen, right. This is one thing I wanted to say about that. Let's see if I can find this. Uh. <laughs> yeah, look at this one. So, there was a dead famous poll years ago ran by The Guardian, where The Guardian thought they were going to be able to win some virtue points by saying, oh, look how progressive and liberal our best pals are. And this is, I'm showing you this, because this is better than any other um, example I can give you. The, the left inhabit a completely different reality. Like, they are fucking off their tits. Like, there's no other way of saying it. They, they'll t I I've, I've, I've kicked the ass out of analogies for how crazy they are. Like, ice cubes are hot. Fucking Colonel Sanders is a vegan. Um, bulldogs don't like licking their own balls. They're just fucking crazy, right? And that flag that Lukaku's Frank Bruno in a wig is holding there. Halla loves equality, right? I don't know how to put this in words. It's it's so lunatic. It's just off it. But basically, if if you were to pick as large a as wide a circle as you could, based around religious beliefs from the entire globe, right? So you you'd have. I mean, I'll just reel them off. Uh, all the ones I know. Just well, not all of them. I know plenty, but we'll just reel off like a big 10 or something, right? If you were to gather up a broad section of people who identify as Christian, Jew, atheist, agnostic, Jain, Sikh, Buddhist, Confucianist, um, everything, Hindu, and then the last one, the regulars, Alan Snackbar. I can't say the M word. You know what I'm talking about, right? So every single possible religion you can think of. And then you polled them and said, do you think we should uh, hang all the willy wofters? Right? I reckon 99% of the atheists and agnostics would say no. Probably about 2% of the Christians would say yes. Uh, 
maybe you start getting up there with some other religions. But the only group where you would get a significant majority, maybe not majority, I'm trying to be as logical and as reasonable as possible. Because so many of them aren't very, very, very devout practitioners, you probably wouldn't have a majority say that they say that they think it would be a good idea to just round up all the wafters and butcher them all like animals. Like you wouldn't get a majority, but the only group of all of them that would have a significant minority, double digits at least, who would say definitely a good idea to kill them all, is the followers of that fella. So for them to hold a flag that says he loves equality is the definition of delusional, deranged, infantile, wishful thinking. Like of every single religious minority in the whole world, that group is the most homophobic by far. And they'll still make a fucking flag like this. Like I said, I don't get it. it it's like... It's like the world's fattest man holding up a big sign saying, I am the skinniest man in, in the world. It's the exact fucking opposite of reality. It's like Warwick Davies holding a big sign saying, LeBron James is a short ass. That I can't think of anything more mental. And they just do it anyway. Like every day, they find new ways to be completely delusional. Like, they sit around a big table in the BBC fucking HQ in Broadcasting House and they go, can anyone think of something that is a nailed-on verifiable fact that everybody knows? And everyone goes, uh, sky's blue. And they go, right, headline tonight, sky's fucking pink. They just openly, every day, find new ways to tell you the exact fucking opposite of the truth. It's mental. Like I said... It is. It's it, well. Well, that's a good one that's used all the time in it too. But I just find it fucking crazy. Like they find new ways every day to make signs like that, where it's the exact opposite of the truth. And this, this one of those many statistics I could show. There's literally hundreds. Because what I'm telling you is a nailed-on fact. And this is hilarious. Like if I was debating with a, a lefty, a woke twat, now like we're in the chat together, and I said, and you say things that everybody knows to be true, they always think they can do a gotcha by asking you for a sauce and then laughing at your sauce. But I don't need to give you a sauce. It's just that everybody knows it. If I was to say to Owen Jones, we were having a chat and I said, yeah, but you know, you know those boys don't like gays to the, to the oil. He'd go, oh, uh, that's, that's just not true. Sauce, you've got a sauce. They just don't. <laughs> you have a sauce for that, really? Don't need one. Not really. Because everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Talk to one. Literally walk to the local Bell End fucking church on a Friday night. And when they're coming out, say to one of them, do you love her? Do you love gay boys, dear? If you can find me a one who'll go, I fucking love her, me. I'll fucking, I'll suck you off. That's how confident I am. Owen Jones doesn't need to do it. If you can find one bloke coming out of a Bell End church on a Friday night, who, who openly say in front of all of his fellow practitioners, ah, there's nothing wrong with wafters. Live and let live. They're all good lads, really. Oh, Elton John and Ricky Martin, I fucking love them. Boy George, smashing fella. Find me one. They fucking hate them. And they just put make signs like that. And, and I'm sitting here at home every day going like, what the fuck? <sighs> he might as well make a sign saying, I am much paler than the boot neck. You fucking aren't. Like you can make as many signs as you like. If it's the exact opposite of the truth, nobody gives a flying fuck. You know what I mean? I just can't get over it. Like, Allah loves Duzzy. <laughs> Duzzy. I reckon it's the exact opposite. Looking at the amount of people who Allah's lads have flung off fucking rooftops in the last 25 years, I reckon he definitely doesn't. Or... Here's the, here's the uh, evidence I was going to show you that. In a survey of American, the lads, 0% <laughs> identified as lesbian, okay? Here's the story behind that statistic. 
Uh, they don't fucking like wafters. Is that the story? Doesn't seem like we need to make it that complicated, does it? Here's the story. They don't like them. They don't like them. You're not going to get some woman in a fucking burger and CNN go around and go, are you a lezer? And she's going to go, yes, I'm a proud lezer. I fucking love munching on rug. While, while Muktada's behind her with a fucking cudgel. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fucking off it. Here's the story. What story? They don't fucking like them. There is no story. Yeah, well, I mean, that one's kind of obvious as well, isn't it? That's what I tell everyone. The silly cunts who go, oh, yeah, I told you, this is a favourite as well by morons. Oh, yes, well, you know, my office, it's always someone in the in the home counties. Oh, yes, well, I work in an office in Kensington, and let me tell you, there is a practising... I don't like using the M-word. YouTube, honestly, you think I'm paranoid? I've been banned more fucking times than Philip Schofield has from his local bus route, and he has a punch on for getting his cock out and beating himself silly when he sees the teenagers fucking snogging because he's a fucking deviant. But we'll just call them us limbs, right? They'll say, yes, yes, I work with this splendid us limb fellow. Yes, he's, he's wonderful. Oh, yes, he's very tolerant. Yes, yes, he's definitely. And he drinks alcohol, don't you know? Yes, he has wine. He likes a nice glass of shard when he's having a pork cutlet. And he loves the homo community. Oh, yes, it's marvellous. The fucker isn't practising. This is what people like me keep telling these fucking racist, bigoted bastards, right? Just because your parents come from Pakistan. This is where I'm more liberal than them, if you think about it. Because, like, I went to school, like I said, and you guys all know, I've got a soft spot for... I'm, I'm not a white nationalist because I went to school with an Indian kid and his fucking family was really good to me. He's not a Muslim or a Buddhist or anything else. He's, like, agnostic because he's not practising. But they literally see someone, like... <laughs> taking the piss out of a posh accent. I can't do a posh accent. Um... They see someone who's a little bit brown and they go, yep, yeah, well, he's one of Allah's boys. They aren't. Like, it's a religion. And the blokes that I liked that are from that neck of the woods did fit in because it was the early 80s and there wasn't fucking millions and millions and millions of them. And they're not practising. So whenever they find one that they hold up as the good follower, the good regular at Allen, they're talking about someone who's like an atheist or something. It just happens to have ancestors that came from a shit hole. You know what I mean? And they go, yes, yeah, he's a wonderful chap. He loves listening to Elton John. I've seen him in a gay disco. He's not a fucking practicing follower. If you're a dedicated follower of fashion, <laughs> there's a good analogy of them. Dedicated follower of fashion, yeah, a big black fucking bin liner with a slit, with a slit in it. If you're a follower, if you're a dedicated follower of fashion, you hate them. You hate people who don't agree with you. You hate the LGBT community. Anybody who likes dogs. <laughs> Anybody who likes a pint. Like, there's a massive difference. It's an ideology, which is what I keep telling you, which is why it's not related. It's not related to race. Because if you get a bloke who was born and raised in Borough, but his grandparents were from Pakistan. Well, it's unlikely, or certainly back in the day, it was unlikely he was going to be a, a dedicated follower of fashion. He'd probably talk like me and be sound and not worry about this shit. But if you're actually practising, as in this story, yes, they don't like them. It's a demonstrable, proven fact. You can make as many fucking daft flags and signs as you like. It's bollocks. It's bollocks. That's a real statistic. Let's find a better one, because there's better ones than that. I found one that The Guardian did where they were literally all of them were like, yeah, yeah, just kill them all. <laughs> it was like casual calls for genocide backed up by The Guardian. Oh, yeah, there's a good one. There's the old one. This is from The Guardian. Look at this one. I mean, again, I'm, I don't know why I'm bothered showing you like this, because you know this anyway. Yeah, look at that one from The Guardian. 
Muslims in Britain have zero tolerance. Zero, right? Not small, not a small difference, is it? Tolerance, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think of Ricky Martin? Yeah, he must kill. <laughs> it's like, yeah, of course they fucking think that. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, well, this is the point, Sadwing. This is the point where I've always said. I haven't got a genuine dislike for the group, the aforementioned dedicated followership, followers of fashion. Because a lot of them are like, they don't know it, but they are reformists. They're like, they're not mega, mega like, oh yeah, anyone who drinks alcohol is a dirty sinner. But the ones who you keep seeing on social media, like, oh, the dirty kaffirs, like the spit the words that you do on the, the kaffirs, the, the dirty kaffir. That one who was eating his dinner in Australia. Did you see that one when he was eating his dinner in Australia? And they're all going, Man, look at this dirty kaffir. And I've seen ones of the coppers in England getting harassed where they're like, get your hands off me, you dirty. Like the really, really devout ones. It's all that noise. My missus must be fucking blasting this shit out of something with a steam cleaner. She loves that thing. Um, they hate them. They just do. And we, and the, the, the reformists need to be empowered, really. But it's a fucking, it's an uphill struggle. Because they're just, I don't know, they have a tendency to hurt people. <laughs> the very, very, very devout ones. And uh, yeah, that's just another example of what I'm talking about. Mo, mo, I, don't, I nearly said the word there. Dedicated followers of fashion in Britain have zero tolerance towards homosexual acts compared to their counterparts in France and Germany. The Gallup poll features the results of a telephone and face-to-face -face interviews with dedicated followers of fashion in the UK, France and Germany. It shows that British ones hold more conservative opinions towards homosexual acts, abortion, pornography, sex outside marriage. Basically, all the stuff that the woke promote, they hate. So once again, keep talking about this, how delusional that these lunatics are that run the world. They always think they can hold two mutually exclusive opinions at the same time. Like it's cognitive dissonance on a massive scale. As I said, they all do it. Rishi Sunak thought it could be woke. The conservatives in Britain thought they could be woke for 12 years. And then when it got to election time, they'd go, oh, we are conservative though. And everyone would go, hey, the, okay. Like really? The, the, the conservatives in England are so woke. It's got to the point where you don't expect any of them to be able to get up in Parliament and not have to, like, spit a couple of cocks out before they throw a fucking speech. You know what I mean? Like, and now we've got a Boris Johnson <laughs> just spitting out the sailors' dicks. Oh, yes, it's my turn to talk, is it? Like, they're the most woke conservatives ever. And the mad bastards don't see any, any contradictions here. Like, how the fuck can the BBC and The Guardian absolutely love the regulars at Allens when of everyone in the UK, they are the most bigoted towards homosexual acts. They love that. Abortion, they love that. Pornography, they fucking love that. And sex outside marriage, they fucking love that. They love all that shit. So how can they be pro Allens snack bar? How can they be pro that when those boys hate everything they like? Well, I'll tell you how, because they're completely off their tits. That's how. Easy. Easy. Done. That's how. If you're not completely off your tits, you're not walk. Uh, oh, there's a boot nigging. 292 troop in the bottom field. Get in. All right, Matt. How are you doing? Fellow Geordie boot neck. <laughs> well, not quite a Geordie me, but fellow boot neck. Um... Yeah, they're completely mental, aren't they? Like, just totally delusional. As I said, up is down, left is right. These fucking people are completely off their tits. And then, because I'm a creature of logic, I've gone from being a reasonable centre-left, socially liberal chap to being, fuck it, I'll hold my nose and vote for Trump. And now I'm a fascist. Like, no, no, I haven't changed. I haven't changed my opinions. Not anti-LGBT. Totally all for individual liberty and freedom. 
don't believe anyone should be mistreated or beaten up or harassed because of what they are or what they want to do or how many blokes they want to hang out the back of on a fucking Saturday night in a gay rave whilst doing Charlie and fucking popping pills. I don't care. I haven't changed my opinions, but they've gone completely deranged. And, oh, yeah, and, and I quite like me granddads. Yeah, I liked them both. Yeah, they're nice fellas. You can you can rubbish my past all you like. You can rubbish my past all you like. I, I have a soft spot for them. Sue me. Was my granddad a bit racist? Probably. Different generation, wasn't it? Probably from that generation who noticed that when London started looking a bit different, the fucking crime rate went up. Now, me being from a more reasonable, global type of generation, I think it's more to do with the standard of people we're bringing in and the fact that they're not well-educated and the fact that they're all poor and that's why they're all shitbags. Uh, I don't think it's because of what they look like or where they're from, but he wasn't a bad bloke. He was entitled to his fucking opinion. Don't don't see don't see why I should hate him for it. <laughs> they knew, yeah, yeah. I guess they did. So I, I I don't I don't think I've changed at all. I don't think my opinions have changed. Um, I don't. I still think I'm centre left, really. But back when the left was sane, and now they're completely off it. So I'll hold my nose and I'll vote against and I'll vote for anybody who'll stand against them. I don't care whether it's Donald. Fucking the Orange Emperor. I don't care if it's fucking Orban in Hungary. I don't care. Basically, they're they are my enemies. I despise them. I despise them, and I will embrace anybody who also stands against them. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. To quote Mister Two, um, don't care. I don't care if it's a far right party. I don't care if it's centre left party. Anybody who's not woke is my pal. And uh, yeah, it's simple as that, really. Anyway, should we call it there? How long is that? 52 minutes. Uh, that's a decent stint, in it? I think I'll go and do something useful, which is continue tidying up this house and hopefully make this room look less like a fucking jail cell with a hat stand in it. Uh, that's the plan. Anyway, welcome home. Yes, I'm in America now, anyone who's asking. I'm in America now, the land of the free. And by the way, let's just end on that. Bad news for us, sad wings. I've been saying for a long time that I don't think you get to vote your way out of tyranny. And I don't believe that we aren't living in it. I don't believe that we aren't living in it. It can't be a coincidence that no matter what you voted for in Canada, America, any country in Europe, anywhere in Australasia, Australia, New Zealand, Anglosphere, anywhere, it can't be a coincidence that no matter who you vote for, you just get the same shit. We had a conservative party for 12 years in England and we got the exact same shit that the Canadians got under Trudeau. Biden was always a moderate, run-of-the-mill, boring-ass Democrat. For the 80s, the 90s, the noughties, he's got such a long career we're going to look at. And we still got woke shit. So to end on a dour note for us, Sad Wings, I don't think Trump can win. I think they've stitched it up. I think every single one of them 10 million illegals have let in will be given about 20 fucking ballot papers and they'll just cheat. I just do not see how we can win. I don't think you get to vote your way out of tyranny. I think you have to do it the hard way. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see it. I think they stitched up the last vote. And I think they will definitely stitch this one up. Because it can't be a coincidence. It doesn't matter whether you're for right or left. Right in England, left in Scotland, left in Canada, right in Australia, left in New Zealand. Aust America had Trump for four years. All we got was the same shit. doesn't matter where you are, what continent you're on. I don't think you get to vote you out of tyranny. And that's what we're living in now, in every Western country. So I think they're going to stitch it up. And the Democrats are going to win again. And like I said, and I live in California, which is apparently a, de a liberal state. I got the pubs, talk to all the locals. I reckon, I'm not even exaggerating. I reckon 28 out of every 30 people I talk to out here in California is voting for Trump. Like, I don't know anybody who's a fucking liberal. 
I don't meet anybody, even the liberals who I work with, like California liberals, like, oh, yeah, I'll probably just vote for Trump. They're either lying to me because I'm, like, a bit aggressive, <laughs> right? But surely not everybody's lying to me. I just don't meet anyone who says they're voting for Biden. So they're, they're going to cheat. They're going to fucking cheat. Uh, it's just a way of it. I'm convinced. So that is a bit of a shit and in it. But as I said, who cares? Eventually you get to win. Eventually you win. But I don't think you get to vote your way out of tyranny. And that's what we're living through. We'll see. We'll see. I hope I'm wrong. Um, and for those asking, Ben Manning's in Newport Beach. Oh, that's a bit posh. A bit posh down there. I'm in Longport, which is near Santa Barbara County because it's right near. It's in Santa Barbara County. It's right on the coast. It's a small town. It's nice where I live. And everybody's Republican. So it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But yeah, no, 81 million. Yeah, there's no, I do not, I think they've stitched it up. I think they've stitched it up, Marge. I think they've stitched it up and I don't think we get the vote our way out of it. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope and pray America pull it out of the bag. We'll see. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to call it there. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you all very soon. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See you in a bit. Toodles. Cheers.